Um, would you ever like to um, reduce your hours at work or stop altogether and become a full-time writer? That's a lovely thing to say and to actually have, you know, a life goal to, to actually do that. Um, I would like to write more. I mean, that is a given. Um, I've got a lot of stories up here. Um, not least more operations novellas as well because obviously the overall series is now finished and I'm sorry folks that it's finished but it's finished but I've got other series up here that I'm you know very very eager to start writing on um there's going to be crime detective stuff maybe cold case type stuff um so yeah I would love I would love to uh write full time however having said that the stuff I do the way I interact uh you know been involved in innovation and um the whole kind of sci -tech innovation it does feed an awful lot of what I write so I wouldn't want to give it up completely I would have I, I would want to have maybe a 30 70 kind of um change then in work 70 percent i think if i could life goals <laughs> one day yeah and um, does your husband read your books is he your beta writer does he read <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to <laughs> My God, does he read my book? <clears throat> okay, well, I will tell you here and now. He does not read my books. I get it. I strap him to a chair. <laughs> I make sure that he is fixed. And then I read him chapter after chapter after chapter. <laughs> He is literally my guinea pig. <laughs> um, so all the way through the Trusted Thriller series and the two operations, that's Operation Snowdrop and Operation Oyster Catcher, that was sort of a husband has actually had me <laughs> reading to him morning <laughs> and night. And um, yeah, uh, he needs to go back to the meds now. <laughs> <laughs> seriously he he does love it he does love it but he won't read he's he's not a he doesn't read fiction he reads a phenomenal amount of non-fiction so all all the all the kind of current affairs stuff and uh, lots of scientific stuff and lots of political and, and other stuff uh he won't read fiction at all um he likes my stuff he thinks sometimes um, I, I step right over the line. <laughs> raise the line completely. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, 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 that'll be fine. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Anyway, so there you go. He, he, he's an inspiration. Though. I mean, he is the reason why I write what I write. I mean, he is my inspiration there's a dedication to him on every book at the end so if he wasn't around there will there would be no trusted through series <laughs> and do you want to tell us the story of how you met <laughs> oh. well actually it is in the trusted thriller series <laughs> it's in book one and uh, it's exactly the same as how Ellie met her Sam. And it essentially it goes something like this. So I walked into the interview. There was the panel in front of me. Um, and I was quite cocky. Uh, I thought I knew, you know, everything kind of thing. And uh, I sat down and I looked up and I saw Sam in the middle. He was, he was looking at me from a very, very dark eyes, um, that utterly gorgeous. Um, and I just melted. I fell in love with him there and then. 
and I didn't know who he was. I didn't know whether he was married or gay or whatever. I didn't know and I didn't care. He was my target and that was it. He was, he was the one. And I didn't care whether I got the job or not. I was not going to leave that place without, <laughs> without saying something. <laughs> the irony of it is he felt the same way. And we literally fell in love, to, literally, at first sight. Um, it was a very difficult interview, though, because I was sitting there and I literally felt like I was dying. You know, so our song is Killing Me Softly. I had Roberta Flack running through my head instead of the answers to the questions they were asking me. <laughs> It was very annoying because I think at one time I did a rather good impression of a halibut. <laughs> oh, that's how I got the job. Well, I know how I got the job. He, he, he fancied the hind legs off of me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that became our song, Killing Me Softly. And it was the song that was uh, being um, played on our honeymoon. Um, everywhere we went, it was it was absolutely blasting out in Corfu, uh, which was very strange, but it it just happened like that. And it really became our song. And years and years and years later, I was on a Capital uh, Radio in London, telling everyone much the same story. Um, it was Valentine's Day and they were talking about, you know, very, very unusual uh, love at first sight and what song is, is the song for you. And I broadcast that throughout the whole of London. And my <laughs> husband happened to be coming back, listened to it in his car and said, oh, what is she doing? <laughs> Um, so anyway, we didn't talk much that evening. He's quite a private person. You'll literally kill me if you ever heard this video. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. There you go. And that's exactly the same as Ellie and Sam met as well. So that is pure, um, uh, the pure truth. That's, that's really sweet. <laughs> It is quite sweet. And so you mentioned music being important and in the back of The Trusted, you've got a list of songs that um, are related to the book. So how did that come about? That's so interesting, actually, because what happened um, over the course of me writing the books, there was different songs that used to hit and I'm... I said I'm a visual person. I'm also into, into music in a big way. Uh, when I hear something, it actually creates a visual in my mind. So I was here. I, I, I mean, the moment I heard Rockstar by, <laughs> by Nickelback, I always had in my mind this kind of, you know, guy that, you know, getting off a Learjet and, you know, I'm a rock star, you know. Um, <laughs> No, I'm not going to sing. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought to myself, playing in the back of my mind when I was putting Salem together, and I thought, yeah, yeah, that epitome scene where he's getting out of his Learjet, he's got the, you know, uh, midday sun streaming, you know, just behind him. He's got his shades on. Uh, he's got his, I don't know, Armani suit or, you know, um, one of the designers <laughs> and he's stepping down and he's, he's a billion dollar kid, you know, um, that, that was playing in my head. And then when I heard Imagine Dragons, um, it was Dean and I thought, oh, this is somebody who's tortured. This is somebody who is with somebody who's trying to take their light or keep their light, you know, that their light is somehow keeping 
they're dark at bay kind of thing, you know, but what they do or something to do with them is actually affecting them. So demons, imagine dragons became Sam's soundtrack, if you like, um, or theme track. But throughout all the books, I've got songs that have hit me serendipitously over the years, but I've remembered them as I was writing the chapters. And they've all been collated into different playlist soundtracks for each of the books. So it's quite interesting because um, Paloma Faith, do you want the truth or something beautiful? She's the reason why I didn't stop at the resonance because <laughs> I was supposed to stop at the resonance. Um, and anybody reading the resonance will say, well, that's a natural stop. But I was listening to her when I was writing the end. And it was like, OK, I've written something here. It, it wasn't completely the end. There was actually bits I was writing in between um, of uh, the final chapters of the resonance. I don't want to give anything away, but I, something happened between two, two of the characters. And I thought to myself, my goodness. And maybe, maybe all writers have this. Maybe all authors have this. So I was writing something and I didn't know I was writing. It was only when I reread it that I realized, oh my goodness, I've written something here and I need to follow this up because this is kind of like a thread. And although it's, it's very subtle, you know, it's very, very subtle. However, that became a much larger thing. It's just like a tiny, tiny, tiny thread that actually becomes this huge, great thing, you know, like a huge pipe from a tiny, tiny, tiny thread to a massive pipe. Ouch, I've just whacked my, my funny button. <laughs> <laughs> right, so therefore I took her song and, cre and created the refracted. And then onto um, onto the sum, um, which is uh, a, a very very dark and light kind of book as well, because it starts off light and ends incredibly dark. Um, it's it's a lot of fun though. There is a lot of fun, um, sick fun, twisted fun, but fun. <laughs> I know some some reviewers have actually said you possibly one of the most twisted writers I've ever read in my life. <laughs> I mean, the stuff you write, Michelle, you have got to be joking. <laughs> what goes on in this little noggin? <laughs> there we go. So that's the kind of backstory to the um, to the to the soundtracks, and they are all available. On Amazon Music. Now, another writer friend of mine told me to put it on Spotify, and he's and he's given me lots and lots of tips about it, which I need to do, and I'll probably do that over Christmas. But at the moment, it's on Amazon Music, and if um, if anybody wants it, I can always let them have it. You know, we can uh, um, we can actually publish it on your page on your group. All right. <laughs> um, you're independently published, so um, are you friendly with all the other authors, um, especially the British authors? Yeah, I'm uh, very friendly with uh, British authors and American authors. Um, I, I kind of like, you know, <laughs> tag along, <laughs> hey, it's Mish here. Um, and um, as I say, that's how I uh, got into this uh, Dead Silent uh, box set. And uh, there's some great authors on there. There's uh, Sandra Woffington. She's an American author. She's brilliant. Really, really fantastic. Uh, you've got Judith Lucci. She's fantastic. You've got Dan Petrosini. Wonderful, wonderful authors. Um, they're on, the, they're on the, the American side. You've also got here, I mean, very, very good friends with the likes of uh, Mel Cumley, M.A. Cumley, uh, Phil Price, Emmy Ellis, um, all, all the uh, great and the good of the uh, crime 
um, crime detection, uh, as Jim Odie, obviously. Uh, yeah, so very, very pally. Um, I tend to um, keep an eye on them. Um, I can, I review when I can. I love their work. I love their work. Um, I'm not sure it's the same thing. <laughs> it's a mutual thing. <laughs> I know when Belle read one of mine, <laughs> I was the dominant, she read it through, she was like this, oh my god, no, she does love the stuff, she does love the stuff, but <laughs> just, Michelle, you're a sick bitch, <laughs> <laughs> sick and twisted, my dear, sick and twisted, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, and ev every time uh, she sees anything about my stuff, she was this fabulous books. she really, really gets it. In fact, she was quite hes hesitant because of the, the sci-fi kind of tag that I, I had, that what the hell was she actually going to be facing? And then she realised it's not sci-fi at all. It's uh, actually metaphysical, political, fast-moving spy, terrorism, murder, kidnapping, torture, you name it. Um, but... It's not the aliens in your face shooting you <laughs> weird goo or anything like that, you know. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, if you were to have a dinner party and you invited four famous people, who do you invite? Ooh, four famous people. Well, it has to be Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming is my, oh, uh, if I had five minutes with Ian Fleming, it would just be. <laughs> adorable really adorable i was reading him when i was um, i think I was about 14 13 14 i loved loved james bond every 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 single um uh, every single novel ian fleming has ever written i have read and i have read his memoirs and everything about it i just adore him he's a wonderful wonderful guy um, I think possibly I'd like Arthur C. Clarke because I I just think he was an amazing writer. Um, I think uh, 2001, 2010, you know, all all these um, kind of space odyssey type stuff, just absolutely phenomenal. But also the way he thought about technology and the fact that he was a futurologist. In that vein, I'd like to, I would have loved to have met Gene Rodenbury. I know he's, he's not your author per se of a book. I mean, he's obviously the creator of Star Trek. Um, but I would love to meet him as well, uh, because I think he had an amazing mind, an amazing mind. Um, Stan Lee, again, he's not the typical um, kind of author, but... He's the creator of Marvel and just phenomenal guy, phenomenal guy. Um, I always wanted to meet him and uh, I I saw him in Hollywood and I didn't have the guts to go up and say <laughs> hello. And he, was, and he was just looking over and he got in his car and I was like, <laughs> um, and I don't know why. I don't know why, because I go up and I speak to everyone but it was just I guess he was somebody who was very very close to my heart and I just didn't I just froze and Sam said what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> why do you <laughs> I, I was always run over by um by Lady Gaga as well <laughs> Uh, okay, we need this story. <laughs> no, no, you don't need this story. <laughs> so you don't need the story. No, that's no, all right. It's okay. <laughs> no, tell me after then. <laughs> well, mission meeting famous people. That's a whole. That's a whole different ball game altogether. <laughs> Singing with them, almost killing them. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know now, don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming out the BBC once, um, and 
I, because I used to do quite a lot of work with the BBC um, years ago, and um, I, <laughs> I came out and I was, it was the Marrowbone uh, Street entrance. <laughs> I came out and I had this enormous bag, as you do, you know, when you just come out of a business meeting. And I turned round and this guy came from nowhere and it was Ronnie Corbett. And he literally went underneath my bag. And as I turned, I almost knocked him into the front of the house. <laughs> I put him back and, and then he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, I almost killed you. And it was so funny because a few weeks later, we ended up sitting next to him and his wife <laughs> in, a, in a restaurant. And, and I was there with some friends who was in the West End. And he turned around. I said, yeah, I'm the one who almost killed you. Sorry. <laughs> And then we just got off and uh, I can't tell you anymore. But... <laughs> oh, oh blimey. Yeah, no, there's some, there's some very, very funny things I've done. Um, um, uh, singing with Rod Stewart was also another very, very strange and surreal thing to do. I was at a private party in the Middle East in Dubai. Um, and um, uh, Rod Stewart was there and uh, there was quite a lot of um, military folk there as well. And it, as I say, it was a very large private party. And I just happened to sort of think, OK, that, that's cool. Um, I'm going to have a go. <laughs> as he was strutting around. He liked my handbag. I, I had this really nice black handbag and... I'd uh, just got myself decked out in Terry Mugler and it was all very, <laughs> yeah, anyway, those were, those were my past days, okay, <laughs> I'm not like that anymore, <laughs> and he kind of like reached down and pulled me on stage and then we started singing, you know, we're having a party, everybody's singing, dancing to the music, on the radio and so forth um so <laughs> and he 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 had a he was just laughing his head off basically he was really really enjoying it and um apparently my husband was in talks and discussions and stuff and then one of the um generals turned around and said to him Oh, by the way, your wife's on stage. Um, I think I better write a book. Mish's embarrassing moments. It would be like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'd read it now. I want to know more. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, there's, uh, there's more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> like chatting to Trevor McDonald about Saddam Hussein over a bacon butty. <laughs> <laughs> As you do, yep, <yeah>, standards. <laughs> oh, dear. And even what you told me, you didn't put out. <laughs> I wasn't put off my bacon butty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm actually crying. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like that. Most people want to sob and bleed and <laughs> No, I'm that type of person. Wherever I go, chaos follows. So I totally understand. Why not? Why not? Why yeah. not? Well, the universe is full of chaos. So we're just following the path, kid. We're just following. Uh, I think it follows me <laughs> and you <laughs> by the sounds of it. <laughs> it's far better to be interesting, chaotically interesting than you know orderly and boring absolutely yep <laughs> yeah. um so you've achieved loads in your career you've written quite a few books what's your ultimate dream oh my <sighs> ultimate dream i mean i keep on saying they're very visual 
And in lieu of a TV series or a film, I've had them put into audiobooks. So I have two fantastic narrators. I have Greg Patmore, who's an Audi Award winner. Uh, he's incredible. He narrates uh, The Trusted, The Dominant and The Resonance. And I have uh, Bridget Thomas, who is a phenomenal narrator. Uh, she, um, she actually narrates The Refracted and The Sun. So in lieu of a TV or a movie, that's what I've done. But actually, it's crying out to be made into a movie or a TV series. So I think my ultimate goal is a Netflix Prime, you know, HBO, something of that nature, which I think um, one day it'll happen. I mean, I know this is this is the dream of all indie authors everywhere um, and I'm under no kind of misapprehension that it's not an easy thing to do um, at the same time I do think what I've written is pretty different pretty original um, very much in the wheelhouse <laughs> of the Netflixes and the primes particularly the Netflix the kind of things that they put on, I mean, the Altered Carbon uh, Series 1, not Series 2, Series 2 got tame. What did they do with it? They got tame. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to go off on one if I talk about <laughs> it. I loved Altered Carbon. I mean, it was one of my favourite, favourite, favourite books ever. You know, um, it was just amazing. Uh, however... When they got to season two, it just didn't work. I think somebody said, oh, you got to tone down things. <laughs> oh, bloody focus group saying, it was too much nudity, too much sex, too much, just, <laughs> too much graphics. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's 18 certificate. People know what they're getting into. Anyway. <laughs> don't get me on my soapbox about that so there you go that that's my dream goal that's what i would love to happen you know for netflix to come along and say yeah we're gonna get a load of that we're gonna get because it, it is in their wheelhouse and it would be a hit hands down absolutely yeah definitely <laughs> i agree i don't know who the people in control of netflix are but i need to get in contact and say here you go, have all these books, sort it out. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I've actually heard rumours that they are searching for content. Oh, really? Through various channels that I know. Yeah, um, they are searching for it. So now they're going to be inundated. Yeah, well, I mean, so many books that I read, I'm like, this should be a film or this should be a TV series. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But I mean, this one, this stuff, I mean, it's it's so in your face and so kind of like, what? Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. In the lab of the guards. In the lab of the guards. <laughs> it isn't everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So my last question really is where can we find out more about you and your books? Me? Little old me? <laughs> Where can you find me? Okay, well, I'm on Amazon. Um, I am in Kindle Unlimited, so they're all free, okay, if you're in Kindle Unlimited. Um, you can find more about me on forever-connected. That's forever, F-O-R-E-V-E-R, hyphen connected, dot com. Um, that uh, website will show you everything you know um the kind of imagery there i've hand-picked myself so you take one look at it um and you will say yay or no um i'm also on facebook i'm all across facebook i've got my weird wonderful i've got the weird wonderful and the way out world of the mish that's a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group. But if you friend me and I like you, I'll make you 
and then that. And then you can be as crazy as the rest of the people on. <laughs> I've also I've also got an author uh, page, uh, which is which is Michelle Medhat um, author, and um, just my profile page as well. I'm also on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, so yeah, um, and I'm even considering being on TikTok soon as well. So God knows what I'm going to do on that. <laughs> cochineal or whatever they call it you know fake blood and, and start shooting <laughs> i have no idea at all no idea at all <laughs> i might be arrested <laughs> no, so, so many of my um american fans they, they keep on saying can we get you more jd would you like us to send you a sig no <laughs> to send me a six hour in the post thank you very much can you imagine that <laughs> oh dear me anyway never it, it's just the way it goes yeah i've i've got a thing about jd i lo i love jd and in all my um in all my books all my characters you know including <laughs> Richard Ashton, the Prime Minister, he drinks far too much, far, far too much. Certainly far too much for somebody who's supposed to be running the country. But... <laughs> I don't know if I was running Britain, I think I'd drink as well. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly after the kind of things that happened to him, I can understand it, actually. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. but, um, Sam, m my own Sam, not Sam character it gets damn confusing I, I can tell you anyway there's absolutely no reason for it no reason at all um anyway i was going to say yeah um he said that i mentioned jack daniel so much in the books that potentially they could sponsor a netflix deal <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's who we need to be talking to then. <laughs> I'm going to broker. I'm going to broker the deal. <laughs> fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. Oh, my cheeks are generally hurting from laughing so much. <laughs> it's been great to meet you, my dear. Great to speak. It has. Yeah, it's always good fun. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. I am, I'm very, very pleased, very, very pleased to have met you. And thank, no, you. thank you. <laughs> thank you, my dear.